It's incredibly rare when a television network can hone in on the sensibilities of an entire generation and immediately click with its audience. For my parents' generation, that was MTV. But for my generation, it was, and continues to be, Adult Swim. Adult Swim may have evolved into the animation empire we know it as now, but it didn't start out that way. Now let me take you back to 1992. Ted Turner had just launched the Cartoon Network, a channel with absolutely no original programming that was built on the back of the MGM cartoon libraries Turner had acquired. So it was essentially the Hanna-Barbera rerun channel. But Turner wanted to make the foray into original programming. And that first original program was Space Ghost Coast to Coast. It was the brainchild of Mike Lazo, Cartoon Network's original head programmer that would later go on to head up Adult Swim. Lazo was a huge fan of the short-lived Space Ghost cartoon from 1966, and since he had access to those cartoons through the Hanna-Barbera libraries, he had the idea to recontextualize those original animation cells and splice them in with interviews of actors and musicians giving the washed-up superhero his own talk show. Hello, I am Space Ghost. Welcome to my show. So, why the need for repurposing animation from the 60s? Well, for the first four years of the show, there was basically no money allocated to the production budget. Space Ghost was an all-volunteer gig since the network was hemorrhaging money at that point. There was no safety net, it was a trial-by-fire effort. But the lack of funding and the indie garage feel gave Space Ghost a unique aesthetic that was different than anything else on Late Night at the time. Okay, so explain this now. Your human dad put his human penis in your shark mother's vagina. And you sat by and let this happen. Pathetic. It was experimental and bizarre, a sort of anti-comedy that helped popularize cringe humor, a genre we see today in things like Nathan For You and Adult Swim's own Eric Andre show. Andre even stating that Space Ghost was his main influence when coming up with the concept. In December of 2000, after the success of Space Ghost, several new shows had stealth releases under the guise of a special programming tag to test the waters of the viewing public. Those shows were Sea Lab 2021, Harvey Birdman Attorney at Law, The Brack Show, and Aqua Teen Hunger Force, all of which were direct spin-offs of Space Ghost. Master is my name, and thirst is what I tame. Aqua Teen Hunger Force, assemble! Frylock, the hunger, hater, tater. Meat rod, ball of compressed meat. All the shows utilized that same lo-fi animation repurposing technique Lazo and his team pioneered. And less than a year later, on September 2nd, 2001, those five shows, along with home movies, formed the initial lineup for Cartoon Network's official late-night animation block, Adult Swim. Branded as alternative programming for when Cartoon Network's primary demographic would normally be asleep. But we weren't asleep. We were up every night watching intently as this oddball block of experimental animation deconstructed and redefined the format. It changed the conceptions of what television could be. Because Adult Swim wasn't just a channel. Over the years as it evolved, it became its own personality, its own voice, speaking directly to the audience. Watching Adult Swim wasn't about viewing each individual program, it was about experiencing the entire night's content. The shows, the bumps, sketches, music, promos, and of course the signature fourth wall breaking inner title cards. Adult Swim was for fans, and it was the first network that felt truly interactive. They'd respond to emails, open a dialogue with the audience, you could submit artwork or music and have it seen by the programmers, and maybe even get featured. People grew whole careers out of being featured on Adult Swim. I was living at my mom's house, and the only TV I would watch is Adult Swim. I would get high real quick, watch all the cartoons, and um, they had a little blip on saying, uh, yeah, you think you got some beats, huh? Send them over. And then they put the address on there, and uh, the, first, the first thing they played, they made a promo for the boondocks around one of my tracks. It just, yeah, it blew me away, man. The only TV you watch, you know, you hear the music on. Adult Swim had a hand in launching the careers of dozens of artists, even boosting the popularity of the Odd Future Collective with their show Loiter Squad. I was sucking my daddy when I was seven years old. We can get away with dick, can't we? We can't say dick? I thought we were Adult Swim. Who's in charge of these rules? How about penis? Can we say penis? MF Doom, Danger Mouse, Killer Mike. I'm Killer Mike. You've been watching Adult Swim. 
All these artists used Adult Swim as a conduit to grow their audience. It broke ground in offering creators different formats for their art, even taking shows like Children's Hospital, which had started as a web series, and importing it into their nightly lineup. They were the first network to really embrace the digital world. We're always, especially at Adult Swim, we're trying to stay ahead of the curve and bring people something they can't see anywhere else, and that includes online. So we've hired writers off of Twitter accounts. We're taking pictures, we're looking online, you know, we're looking on Instagram, we're looking on Facebook, we're on Vine. You know, for me, it's just inhaling as much content as possible and trying to figure out what works for us. Adult Swim also became the go-to network for canceled or soon-to-be-canceled programming. It had a direct role in the revival of one of Fox's most popular cartoons, Family Guy. Hi there, I'm Peter Griffin. Next Sunday, Adult Swim is airing an episode of Family Guy that Fox refused to show. But my good pals at Cartoon Network are showing it. Although I think they're making a couple of changes because I'm so controversial. After Family Guy's cancellation in 2003, oh no, it premiered in reruns on Adult Swim and exploded in the ratings boosting viewership to over 200%. And less than a year later, it was renewed by Fox for another season. The show even added this bumper to one of its later episodes, taking a jab at Fox for its unjust termination. And in 2007, an almost identical renewal deal happened with Futurama, after an increase in viewership when the show started airing on Adult Swim. But probably Adult Swim's biggest contribution to television was its introduction to mature anime to an American audience. And it started with Cowboy Bebop in 2001. Adult-oriented anime became the backbone of the network, sort of an extension of Toonami, which ironically later became incorporated into Adult Swim after its own revival campaign. Thank you to Cartoon Network, thank you to William Street and everybody at Adult Swim for actually paying attention to the voice of the people. You have spoken loudly and you have spoken clearly. Hashtag, bring back Toonami. But Adult Swim wasn't just about giving content a second chance. It was about giving it that first chance. It's a hub where creators can create, where the art is experimental and transgressive and surreal and sloppy. It's a place that welcomes risk-taking, that wouldn't immediately dismiss a show where the main character is literally a pair of ass cheeks. Adult Swim canceled your favorite show? Good. The important part is it gave you a favorite show, most of which weren't even designed for longevity. They're supposed to be fleeting. That's what makes them so special. It's about spontaneity. It's about the community. It's about the experience. And that's one thing you can't get from Netflix.